What's up guys? This is Return to Tennis. I'm Aaron. Thanks for returning. So, we got something off of eBay to play with. Uh, recently, uh, Harry over at Tennis Spin did a video on this racket. Got me kind of curious. So I went out on eBay and of course I hunted one down. It is the Vocal Power Bridge 10. Uh, 330 grams unstrung. This came in on weight, 330 exactly. 320 swing weight, 10 points headlight, RA of 59. So a couple of the specs are right in the range I've been testing, except for the weight. It's it's a chonky boy. With the strings, it's sitting at 346. It is a heavy, heavy racket, 93 square inches. The racket I have closest to it that I've hit, it would be probably the Astuza Power Beam. The Astuza Power Beam is 9 points headlight, 92 square inches, 343 grams with strings, um, and it also has a 320 swing weight. So they're very similar, very heavy. Um, what really kind of piqued my interest with this racket was that it's still in production. Vocal still makes these. If you go to the Vocal website, you can buy one brand new. They run about $180. You can also get it from Tennis Warehouse Europe for about $152, but after you pay shipping, you're probably in that $175 range anyway, so it's close. But they still make them. This, the oldest racket review of this that I could find, the oldest review was from 2009. So this racket has been in production, as is, for the last 14 to 15 years. They have not changed the specs. They have not added technologies. It has the power bridge. It has the DNX fibers at three and nine which was developed uh with a german technology institute for this racket it's the same racket today as it was 15 years ago um maybe some cosmetic changes but no changes to the frame so why like why is this racket so you know desired by a certain niche group of players. It kind of has like a cult following. I would guess that most of that cult is in Europe. Um, Tennis Warehouse US doesn't offer it. So there's still a demand for it, at least in Europe, as is. 330 grams unstrung. It does have the standard vocal handle dampening system in it. It is a hefty stick. Um, we're going to get out today and hit it. Let's maybe maybe there's something magical here that I'm not seeing. Uh, we're gonna see maybe we can figure out why it is such a high demand racket, or that at least it has enough demand that they still produce it. I mean, you're 15 years on, they're still making this thing. Um, but let's get out and check it out. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we go. First time really hitting this. Warmed up. Uh, Actually, I warmed up with the Artengo TR960. I'm going to start off with backhands as always. Liked it on backhands. Um, that's any more, the backhand is my most reliable shot for me. My forehand's not so much. It is hefty. Um, very thin beam. It's a 19 millimeter beam. A uh, little bit hard to find a sweet spot on it for me. I had a little more success finding the sweet spot backhand wise than I did with um, the forehand side. But it has very much kind of a pro stock, pro racket kind of feel because of the weight involved in it and the head size and the thinness of the beam. It very much has that feel of a racket that you would have seen in you know, the late, mid, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, slice backhands are actually were quite good with this racket. I really enjoyed those. I actually hit those better than the top spin shots. Forehands, of course, is always a little bit of a struggle. Um, it was, the extra weight of the racket, this thing is at 346 grams. It's really kind of threw my timing off. I was really late on a lot of shots. I started trying to prep my backswing earlier to compensate because I was just not getting 
dialed in for this racket. I was always coming in a little late, hitting the ball. And there we go. Not uh, out in front of me as well. And I think the, the weight of it had a lot to do with it. Um, it has very similar specs to the Boris Becker Delta Core London Tour, but the main difference there being that the London Tour is even more flexible and it's about 10 grams lighter. So I have a little bit easier time handling it. Uh, I'm not, you know, I can see the appeal in the racket because of it has kind of that pro stock spec. I imagine a lot of the people that are still playing with this racket or have that kind of cult like following that niche market for this frame because there's still demand for it in Europe are probably older players guys that are probably in their 40s and 50s that were used to the rackets you know of the 90s and the early 2000s much like myself um, where the frames were predominantly heavier predominantly stiffer head sizes were predominantly smaller uh, I've tried to kind of move away from those older frames use more modern equipment I will say I still prefer the thinner beam I still prefer a smaller head shape and like right now I really like my V-Core 95 um, I can't play the stiff frames anymore though Ugh, that was ugly the racket is not really lacking power I kind of expected it to be a little similar to the Delta Core London Tour um, in that it would just be massively underpowered that I would be able to just go ahead and swing as hard as I want and most likely the ball was going to drop in that wasn't really the case with this it had I could put pretty good pace on the ball without really swinging very hard and I think that has a lot to do with the mass of the racket uh, it's, you know, 346 grams. It's headlight. And so, ugh, bad slice. That's a little better. So it can just really push through the ball, even if I don't swing hard. The Delta Core London Tour has a swing weight of 308, which is significantly lower in comparison. And then that one I could kind of, I had to really kind of plow the ball. But this one, without much effort, especially on the forehand side, I could hit with a fair amount of pace. The extra weight of the racket really helps drive that ball. Despite the head size being only 93 square inches. Control was solid. I just really struggled uh, with the sweet spot being a lot smaller than what I'm used to. It seems small, like a really small. And the weight was throwing my timing off. I was really late on a lot of shots. See, that was late. I was still not catching the ball there like I should be. That was a bit better. Um, and it's, you know, with that heavier frame, that heavier weight, you got to prep sooner. And I just wasn't figuring that out often enough. I, I got some of them. But, I mean, like I said, if you're one of those guys that were really big on playing small head frames in the 90s. Um, this racket is right in your wheelhouse. 93 square inches, it's you know heavy, which basically it's very similar to a lot of the rackets I used to play. Like the Wilson 6.6 .6 Pro Staff, the Estuza Power Beam, you know, small head size, thin beam, and heavy just really heavy but I, I enjoyed it it was fun I mean not something I'm gonna uh, be playing anytime soon I'll probably keep it in the bag maybe pull it out once in a while to, just to mess around with but I do like that thinner beam like I said it's a 19 millimeter beam I do like thinner beams of boxier beams those old styles uh, but it's it's not a bad stick anyway you guys we do have a follow-up to the Regna coming soon until then, get out and hit some balls. We'll see you soon.